Hello, everybody, and welcome to the CIS Playoffs. It is Team Spirit versus Espada. I'm Dakota, and I'm going to be joined by none other than Purge. Hello, Hello. my good friend. Hello, Tess. Can you hear me? Uh, I can faintly hear you. Talk again? Hello, Tess. Tess. That's yeah, definitely a lot better there. I'm going to bump this shit all the way up Wait, for you right so there. I should also scream, is what you're saying. I got you up there now. Okay. Well... Hopefully that doesn't sound terrible. Fingers nope. Crossed. You sound great. In fact, to make sure I can even bump this guy up for you so you can definitely be sure to hear yourself. Oh I'm yeah. going to do the same on my end. Okay. Sounds good. Great. All right. So here we are. I know that me and you, we've been jumping around these regions quite a bit. Uh, we started our adventure on CIS. We did. Yesterday we were on South America, and now we're back at CIS oh. again. And it looks like there's been some... Developments since then, yeah, maybe not too then. interesting, maybe not too surprising, but at the results of the CIS group stage, our, uh, we got Fly to Moon at the top, now currently called, what did I say, Wind Streak or something like that? Who wind knows? Wind Strike? I think Wind to Strike is what it is. So they're now known as Wind Strike. We have Team Spirit, Espada, and Double Dimension. Since Fly to Moon were the first seed, they just finished playing against Double Dimension, and hence why we are now hopping into Spirit versus Espada. Spirit finished 5-1, Espada finished 5-2. I guess that should be 5-2, 5-2, right? Whatever. Uh, what is it? Did they play one less game? <laughs> it, it was probably because they, uh, it was the, uh, oh, these games don't matter, just close them out. Like, oh, there was, a, yeah, 0-0 zero, zero didn't we, matter. We didn't game. need to see, uh, I guess Gambit uh, Vega could have given Vega a win or vice versa. Ah. So Maybe the, the score's a little coarse, but I think they were just trying to save time considering that uh, there's so many qualities going on. That does make sense. All right. I mean, on paper alone, would you have a favorite looking at this matchup, maybe looking at these players? Um, I think <gasps> that both teams seemed pretty good to me. Um, I, I Spotto, I thought, was impressive uh, towards the start of the group stage, so it'd be cool to see if they have a good run considering that they have less popular players, uh, arguably. Uh, BZ being the most known, other than the fact that he refused to tag himself as such, as such unless like 633 is uh, similar to BZZ in some way, considering the pattern. But um, <laughs> yeah, it'd be, it'd be cool to see them do well. Uh, they have a cool logo too, it's a sword and a shield. That's baller. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, you know, f the family name, Espada, is what we fight for. Feels pretty, uh, you know, I'm sure that'll be eaten up by some sort of sponsor if they happen to make it through the rest of this bracket, but. As it stands right now, this team has been known to pull out a lot of Bounty Hunter. I've actually, as I was finishing that sentence, they actually banned it <laughs> in the second phase on the side of Spirit, so I guess they recognize that as well. Espada had kind of the those similar elements to like how Ad Finem bursted onto the scene, it feels like, where they had these kind of fun little niche picks that started warranting respect bans from some of the other teams. But we have to see what the second string of potential heroes could be for Espada, and it looks like they're going to be opening up their draft with Lady Naga Siren. Once revered as the most boring and tiresome cores in the game, now just one of the more, you know, utility-friendly supports that can set yeah. up ganks and make shit happen. It's like they went through the big phase for a long time of Naga Siren generally being abusive because of her ulti, and now it's like they just get her because she's good at the laning stage, and once in a while we see an ult that's relevant, you know? Yeah. But it doesn't seem... there's It doesn't seem like uh, it's, it's about the, the OP wombo combo anymore, which is nice. But high armor... Uh, lowers armor, has a pretty good level 1 nuke, and then transitions in ensnare, which is useful in lots of ways. So it's like a, a high utility hero that's very good at lane control. Um, and a lot of times they're more relevant than Sky in the late game. Immediate response from Spirit after seeing that Naga was the Skywrath Mage and the Axe. Plenty of synergy between the two of them, obviously. If Axe was to get a decently timed Blink Dagger while Skywrath Mage is level 6, they could pretty much do hit and run jobs all across the map. Heavy burst and good initiation. Um... Why do you think they would go for the Lycan even after seeing the Axe? Wouldn't Axe typically be a counter against Lycan? I mean, pretty much anyone who likes to hold the Wolfman in his spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it definitely has a lot of really good benefits, especially in the laning stage because the you're dealing pure damage. Um, did the Wolves get HP buffed recently? No, I, th I think they're, they're still low HP but high magic resistance, if I'm not mistaken. So Axe Spin is actually really good there. But uh, the one, one good thing about Lycan is that as a carry, he's pretty okay at sustaining as like a I'm in a bad lane hero like uh, he just kind of sits in his lane he gets a lot of feral regen um, he has low armor but his opponents dealing largely magic and pure so in some ways you could argue that he's in a decent spot and he can sustain that and he can send wolves at Skyrath for example so as long as he doesn't as long as he's careful not to get like called and creep waves I think it's okay but um, 
Yeah, it's, there's definitely some problems, but I think it's uh, the the other benefits outweigh it, and we still do see a lot of lichen picked up in the first phase. Yeah, certainly a spot are looking at a lot of their benefits if they feel confident enough not just to pick it, but to pick it right away here. Oh. So second phase of bands after removing the bounty hunter, spirit get rid of the bane, and uh, a spot to get rid of the wind ranger and the pl. Uh, I'm curious about hear your thoughts on the bane. Also, I, I noticed you're looking at the like and thing to verify it <laughs> in time as well. Of course. But Bane had been regarded as one of the best like lane bullies in the game, you know. But uh -huh. as of recent, it seems like that's been changing a bit, or at least getting the impression from some of the others and their opinions on Bane that they may be shifting quite a bit. Do you believe that? And if so, why? Uh, who was the hater yesterday? It was the cost, I believe. I think so. He was like, Bane sucks. And I was like, come on, dude. They're picking him first phase. Like, come on. You, can't <laughs> you know you know what's disgusting about Bane? Bane has 62 base damage. What the hell is that? 62. So yeah, it's pretty it's crazy. I mean, there's crazy. some supports who can flex on that. You know, your Rasta may even be able to kind of give okay, him a run yeah. for his money in the last hits. But Bane already has everything else going for yes. him. So adding the last hits on top of that, the power is just got crazy. Four something armor, which is ridiculous for an end hero. He's got like 315 base movement speed or 310 base movement speed. He's fast. His great animation. His only weakness is his attack range is not the best. Yeah. But he's also got Brain Sap, which is a. A swap. You're dealing 90 damage, and you're healing yourself for 90 damage. That means you're dealing more damage, you're fast, you have moderately high armor, and you're getting better trades. He is, like, the best 1v1 trader in the game, more or less. I don't know if there's a Maybe lot of, as a support. I feel like he was... Now that you mentioned that, I feel like the reasoning that Bane may be falling off is just because the lane matchups and setups are just not what they used to be for maybe while Bane was in his prime. Uh, I think, what, is the reason it's a lot more 2-1-2s? Yeah, but, but that's that's kind of where he's shined. Yeah, though. I mean he's gotten some nerfs, and Feeble got nerfed level early on. Like he was more dynamic before. He could just go to a lane and Feeble so many instead of brain sap trading. But um, he's still very good at the laning stage and doing things like nightmare <laughs> rotations to set up is good. Uh, grip can be very useful in the late game. Nightmare late game has been very good just for the one second of invulnerability duration. Rather than having shadow demon, why not just pick up Bane sometimes? That way it gives your your core if he's trying to be cha chained on a second to maybe get his BKB off, uh, for example. So just a lot of really good things about the hero. The wolves do have 80% magic resistance, but their HP is about 200 early on. So it should be a little bit scary for Lycan if he summons wolves off some, but it should be fine. And uh, they go for the Witch Doctor. So stuns versus Lycan stuff, but at the same time, I'm still looking at very low armor supports. Um, so I feel like Lycan should be able to run them down is maybe the only thing I'm worried about. Yeah, it's a stun, and they needed one, really. I mean, they have some lockdown on Team Spirit's side, but just no real like distance lockdown available. Coconut's okay. You know, you are relying a little bit on RNG to be able to make it happen. Sure, Lycan has his wolves to hopefully make that a bit easier, but... You know, overall, we've just been seeing some hot and cold witch doctors, so I'm excited to see what Spirit are going to be able to bring with it here. And a disruptor. So nothing really weird pick-wise so far is is what I'm seeing. I hear you nice and nice and loud yes, now. Yes, Rob touched something magical, yeah. and now there there must have been like one knob that was wrong, and I feel therefore like the game. they must have just went like we're no, going to get purge the game. This is the game, right? This no, that was just your, the game's up here. He must have touched this little black oh, thing okay. up here. But I'm not touching it again. So, sorry if the sound was a little off, you guys. There is a five-minute delay, and it probably took the time for them to wait the five minutes to hear the volume come up, make the appropriate Yeah, I, I wrote something in the in the group chat because I was like, I, I just want to let them know that we, we felt very uncomfortable as we went live uh, because it's it's hard to remember when you jump setups halfway through a tournament. Um, it's nice when you get used to how things are supposed to be. Yeah. Then you jump somewhere else with different tech and uh, yeah. make and, mistakes. Uh, you know, and we're not about to go be touching these knobs and buttons and stuff. There's like a lot of knobs and buttons. There's so many, there's so many things I can mess up. Out of my pay grade to start messing with all that. Yeah. And I'll end up ruining it anyways. I so. think that's actually one thing that would genuinely be worth all casters like trying to take a class on in their free time is audio tech stuff that's like the one thing i do not understand well as a, as a that as should a just talent. be a class more available since the new thing is like streaming and streaming setups and twitch mm -hmm. like there's a lot of people out there who could probably benefit from learning a yeah. little bit about audio engineering and i definitely should take a class or something that'd be useful all right solve some of them problems like the lack of stuns no i'm just <laughs> I, I <don't. laughs> on espada here we go <laughs> did they take a class for we'll how see. to set up a proper draft we'll see here Ooh, chaos knights fun yeah, kind of interesting. Uh, how do you feel about Chaos Knight as a hero? Do you like him? I like him, but 
the problem I always see with them is it's like it feels like it's a lot based around his ulti, which already is a long cooldown. Because when that's not going, his farming feels so weak. It's just like one creep at a time. It's yep. not like a massive cleaving kind of hero. He doesn't pick up Mjolnir. He doesn't pick up Battle Fury typically. But when he does have his ultimate and he does get the upper hand, it feels like he could just delete any hero in the game at the yep. same time. So I'm very conflicted. When yep. he's ass beating, I love him. When he's just farming, I'm like, I feel like he's not going anywhere fast. It's the problem of illusion heroes, basically, that they are amazing when their illusions are all up. And therefore, because they have illusions and it's like multiplying power in that if you buy a strength item, it's making it's making all your illusions better too. Those heroes are like only good with illusions. And once you don't have them, they suck. And Chaos Knight's problem is it's all about his ultimate. And it's like 145 seconds. Yeah. But it is so amazing when you have it. But now he's in this, this weird problem where like he just doesn't farm as fast as other heroes. He can't buy Battle Fury because then it doesn't make his illusions good. But then it would allow him to farm into another item. But then it's like, why am I not just playing somebody that's good with Battle Fury instead? You know. True. Um, yeah. But his his benefit is he is good at lane. He he can contribute disables to lane, which most carries can't. Yeah. The uh, the other side of that problem is that uh, when you have good disables as a carry, you usually don't have that much good damage. Um. So kind of like Wraith King in some ways, he's got a disable, but it takes a while to ramp up. Yeah. And for even sure. then, when you do, sometimes you still get kited and things like that. So. And, and even though it's, it feels like it's later in the draft and they can reserve this Chaos Knight to hopefully kind of, I don't know, catch a spot off guard. I mean, a spot is still at two picks, and already they pick up a Lish. It's wonderful at clearing illusions. So yeah. that's going to be very <laughs> nice to have that. If Spirit are rolling in on someone else on their team, like they're liking, let's say, Lesh could kind of jump into action yeah. and help kind of clear out the mess a lot quickly. Of times it does come down to that, like, can is Lesh jump? Uh, do they jump Chaos Knight, or does Chaos Knight jump somebody else? Because that's one of the best things about Chaos Knight. Get the ulti off as the fight's starting. Do like a blink reality rift stun. That guy almost always dies instantly. Yeah, that's the scariest thing when I playing against a Chaos Knight. But if you go on him first and he gets illusions off while all the damage is already going down, then it's much easier to deal with him. But between like having Axe and now Chaos Knight, if he gets a blink uh, in the mid game, and then having Witch Doctor Sky off the back that up, that's like two supports that actually deal a lot of damage and can get kills if there is a disable initiation. So if Spirit can get off to a good start, I could definitely see them um, having good map pressure in the mid game. There's a lot to focus on when you mention it like that. Axe jumps in, immediately a spot is focused, is probably on the Axe and awaiting potentially who's going to come in behind, and you would think initially it's the Dark Horseman, like Chaos Knight. He's coming to beat some mass. But yeah, you can't forget Witch Doctor, you can't forget Skywrath Mage either, and suddenly a spotter like out of tools to deal with those illusions because they were dealing with, you know, a Witch Doctor's Death Ward that was going off for the past 30 seconds, or, you know, maybe Skywrath Mage kind of getting into a clutch position for a setup, let's say. It's just... It is going to be a lot to deal with for Espada. They will so. have Song at least, and even things True. like Glimpse against Axe is pretty good, because you can send it back, it'll basically offset like two seconds of the of the call, but... Um, so they have, they have solutions, um, and now with Sand King, they kind of took their lineup that was lacking stuns and turned it into something that is going to be more, more chain stun heavy, and give them gank opportunity and ability to counteract what their opponents are doing. And team fight, heavy team fight now too, for sure. It's... It's actually a little almost over the top, like pipe, I imagine, it's got to be on the docket, likely for Axe. Uh, but then he can't get like a fast blink or Vanguard Crimson or anything like that, which may be decent this game when you have something like Lycan and the Wolves and such. But Yeah, this is kind of uh, it's a lot of different ways you can go as Axe, I guess. Lately, people just go like Brown Boots, Vanguard, then they get a blink. Because um, it kind of covers the bases a bit better. Uh, then they have to go Blade Mail usually. Um, and then maybe BKB's, uh, but Axe is kind of up in the air for sure. Uh, Pipe is not bad this game for sure, against, uh, especially, I don't know their roles very well, but if uh, if the Lesh is mid and it kind of looks like that, it looks like offlane, yeah, li uh, mid Lesh Rack, so yep. yeah, uh, having magic resistance might be really beneficial for somebody like Axe, maybe if it's in a hood there, minimum. Yeah. We'll just have to see if it's something that could prolong one of his other useful items that he may need this game or not to deal with the power of Espada, but last pick is a Viper. I actually haven't seen too much Viper recently. Lane Dominator in his own right, maybe anticipating the matchup against the Lesh. I would imagine Viper cool. versus Lesh is pretty Viper favored. Uh, what do you think? Viper is not the same hero as he used to be, but I would say against a hero that has semi-low HP and semi-low armor, he would be good. Because the problem now is you have to get their HP low for your poison attack to do anything. So, for example, if you lane against a DK as a Viper, it just mostly sucks because he has so much regen that he's just always full until later when you get yeah. your, your second skill. Um, I played a Viper against a DK the other day, and it was really nice because the DK participated in first blood. So when he got to lane, he was already at, like, 60% health. And I was like, oh, my God, this works. I can actually just keep him 
at that level, so then my poison attack just always does damage. But So against like a Leshrac who doesn't have very much armor, he's got 3.7 at level 1, then you can actually just right-click him two or three times and he loses like 25% of his health, and then your poison attack does something while also reflecting some of the magic damage. So I think there's definitely some kill potential. If they rotate a hero over, absolutely, it's dangerous. And once he eventually yeah. gets Nether Toxin as well, it's going to combo really well with their heroes, like Axe Call into Witch Doctor Maledict, throw another Toxin down so that amplifies, amplify the sky damage. Like, there's a lot of cool things like that that their lineup does. Uh, the only hero that I think Viper might have to fear, other than, like, crazy chain stuns, is Lightning, because he's going to have to ideally get some agility to get his armor up while also worrying about that magic nuke. Yeah. So, I'm curious what items he'll go. I, I'm not really sure what the ideal build is. I usually go Helm of the Dominator, but I'm probably out of the meta on Viper, so I'm not sure. Yeah, and like I said, it's been a while since I even see the Viper. G, I know, is pretty polished with the Viper, so I'll uh, be player. eager to see what he's going to be doing with it. Smoke movement coming out from Espada, moving in deep on this one. Which Doctor not quite positioned perfectly to break this. Um, if he was a little bit deeper into the trees, he definitely yeah. would have been able to break that smoke. But the, the rest of the team is oh, well positioned. Oh, but too. this means that they're going to be able to sweep him from behind. Smoke's okay. pop. They know Smoke. that they're going to be behind the tower. Looks like they'll split apart. Cool. That'll be the end of it. The place he was standing in is going to break their smoke, but he's in the trees, and their tier two mid or their tier two uh, radiant offlane tower is going to spot them. So they didn't need to waste a ward to do that. They still break the smoke. Their opponents will know that somebody was there, but nobody loses anything. For sure. Like those sh shout out to this. Sorry, this witch doctor set is just making me giggle. Oh, I've never seen, seen this Shroomy, Elfy, Gnomey witch doctor set before. I it's actually pretty rad. This is the new one. Uh, I don't know if you know this. It has a death ward animation custom really which I, I mean i never ended up getting the frog one even though it was awesome the uh, frog one was amazing but it's like super rare yeah it's very expensive right and yeah even though it was like one of the first sets that anybody ever saw uh, made but this one actually has like a custom animation you'll see it it's a little oh, angry yeah. mushroom dude cool. that's amazing yeah i hate how they make the best stuff the rarest <laughs> <laughs> it's so unfortunate it makes sense and it's also terrible yeah Okay, so he's actually going to be up against the Lycan instead. They'll put the Leshrac and the uh, the safe lane farmer. Oh. And they are rotating lanes right now to Yeah, the sky. this looks like a nightmare now. I mean, especially if the Skyrath Mage is going to be here to, to pop him a bit. It looks like Misha's already rotated over to help mend those wounds. Thunderstrike is also a pretty damn good level one spell to spam out. I mean, when oh, I play my Disruptor cool. games, I might even go to lane with like three clarities just to be sure I really take it to the core with it. Uh, on the bright side, they did just nerf the, uh, the skill again. It's an 18-second cooldown at level one now, so... Further buffing Slax's playstyle of uh, Maxian Thunderstrike as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah. Do you even like to get the Thunderstrike hits on Disruptor, or do you value more just getting gold, the gold per minute? It's high gold per minute, but you get longer vision, four seconds. The Maybe you can push out waves. The four, s four strike hits is like actually kind of crazy if you think about it. Yeah. It's not just the damage, but the, the vision of the glimpse back is so nice. Yeah. Um, but I guess it kind of depends on the situation, how much trouble you're having catching people, how much split pushing do you need. Like 100 GPM is kind of insane, but level 20 is also very high for, for a Disruptor. I feel like yeah. a lot of Disruptors don't get to that point because they have to focus their items. Either they're usually playing 5 or they need to get to something like an Axe rather than buy defensive items. So I just feel like in the average pro game, it's like not even a conversation that happens often enough. To, but in pubs, yeah, like it's, it's definitely a hard decision. Yeah, because usually at that point, like, well, it takes a while for Disruptor to get to level 20. By that point, your opponents are certainly going to have heavy mobility items or just move fast or something, so maybe those extra four ticks of vision may just be the, the game changer in that. Okay, battle out for the Arcane Rune at the top. Even a Kinetic Field going to get dropped. They'll deny it. But it's pretty much a support 1v1 and a mid 1v1 all happening in the mid lane. the kill on the Disruptor. Oh, he is. Arcane Bolt's got a Mango. Does he pop it? Does he need to? No, he doesn't. Just right clicks him down. Biver with the chase. That's pretty good. Uh, I mean, I don't necessarily know if Misha realized he was going to go down from that one, but against Skyrath Mage, is a lot of damage early. He did also go for a Null Talisman rush, which sometimes is skipped these days, depending on the role, but works out really well. And he's going to guard to make sure the Curry doesn't come back. Mm -hmm. And that was Misha's magic stick, by the way. So he's not going to be. Yeah, <laughs> that's why that Misha pinged the Courier. Like, please do not let him kill that thing. That's my magic stick on it. So they guard it out, and it looks like it'll be fine. Even Witch Doctor was rotating over to poke around and see if he could catch eye on the courier or not. I mean, they're, they're basically putting a lot of pressure on the Lycan here, which is a good idea, because if they make Lycan's early game weak, and then in the mid game they just gank the crap out of the Lesh, who's a little bit vulnerable if pressured, mm -hmm. then they should be in a good position, I would imagine. 
Looks like they had to swap out bodyguards for the Lycan now. Then they have Naga by his side and put Disruptor towards that bottom lane to farm it out. Yeah, just Disruptor's not going to be able to sustain it. He's already out of regen um, after the initial trade, so if he goes back again to the mid lane, he's going to have to buy more regen to sustain that. Instead, put Naga there. He's got higher base regen. He's got higher armor. He's got three mangoes sitting. Yeah, but it's he's currently watching his Lycan friend go down. He can throw out a net, but that's not going to be offering a whole lot. Misha's here now, but... You know, Lycan is just getting that pressure you're talking about and now buckling a bit under it as it's just a bit too much. And Viper's item build, uh, not uncommon but cool, um, goes for a double Wraith Band. Um, not the Aquila Rush as sometimes is done, but this one is just a little better. It, he's gone now a Wraith Band and an Aqua to finish the Aquila. So his first like thousand gold basically is an extra Aquila thrown on top that's more damage to make it more easy to last hit. And um, yeah, just more stats, more mana, everything. I think Lacoste was talking about in one of our open games, we witnessed a team that had gotten multiple Ring of Aquilas. Do you On think that's who? still a thing? On like one team, they got multiple. On like, the same team? Yeah. And yeah. It's like, it's fine. You know, it, you know, they're fighting with as it is. And later on, it's just something they could sell out for that final six slot. Yeah, the item is just way too good to not buy on agility heroes, basically. Yeah. So if, if your mid is an agility core and your carry is an agility core, it's like you're going to buy. And maybe your offlane is too. So like buying three of them, I don't think it's unreasonable just because it's it's a freaking 19 damage item. Yeah. That helps you win the lane. Okay, pressure on like in mid lane. Biver's back. Dishes Can't out miss. multiple arcane bolts, and this is certainly the death of him once again. Another takedown for G. He's having the time of his life with this dual mid lane action. That's one of the toughest things, actually, for Viper as a, as a mid laner now, is that a lot of times whether or not you miss your poison attack completely changes whether or not you get a kill. Because the cooldown, it has a cooldown again. Um, so if you just happen to miss that attack that you need to keep the slow going, to keep the damage going, it, it's it's a big loss. Uh, top rune, Misha is fighting Viper here. Yeah, this fight's on both sides. You can just see the importance of this five minute rune spot. And it looks like it's going to be a grab on the Skywrath Mage. They'll finally make him punish, and the spotter will get themselves onto the board. Meanwhile, we see Witch Doctor chasing out that bottom lane. Wanted to see, uh, what was that? Two runes? For each side, it looks like. Pretty yep. down the middle. Yep. Two and two. Sand King's just going to pull the creep wave here. Um, oh, interesting skill build on Illidan, actually. He went for one stun and two reality rift, and then followed up with two more stuns, which is very weird. They're going back on mid again, like in trouble. Whoa! Half Under HP. the tower, he has no help. I think Ow. this is certainly going to be the end of it here. Okay, at this point, like, is there something you can do? Like, how do you even change no. this up? I don't think you could just say, okay, Lycan's not in mid anymore. Let's just put someone else there to die. It's actually such a good dual lane. It, it reminds me of Axe Skywrath, basically. Because it's the same thing, right? You want to lower his HP so Poison Tact does more. So you put him with the best harasser, the Skywrath Mage. Yep. It's such a cool dual lane. But Viper obviously succeeds much better in the mid lane versus the safe lane because of his low movement speed. His, uh, you know, uh, he's not just he's very slow and he needs some defensiveness basically yeah so just put him in the mid lane dual lane mid against these hero matchups that should be good and all of a sudden they make skyrath mage look amazing and they make viper look amazing it's like giving them this massive upper hand and now lycan is jungling because that's all he can do he actually can't go to lane anymore oh midas even on ck too that's weird that's like is that just them thinking that they're flexing on him super hard right now because you think like okay yeah. they just have to withstand Withstand the Viper, withstand the, you know, Skywrath lane. You know, Viper falls off late game, man. Skywrath will fall off once we have magic immunity and, you know, magic deal ways to deal with heavy magic burst. But is there going to be a late game at this rate? They are going to be able to put a heavy rotation onto Illidan. A fresh Midas is not going to save you from this one. Jeez. So he gets blasted apart. May get return fire on Nyx, but no. Just FNG walking into the action falls down just as fast. Uh, bas basically, they, they went on Sand King. They had a massive creep wave. He used his uh, OP ability Sandstorm, and yep. that was it. Can't kill him. <laughs> and then the TPs come. Illidan stays a little bit long. If he has boots of speed there, maybe he gets out in time, but realistically, probably still caught. And he even committed his ulti, died instantly to the last rack. Um, the, the Midas pickup, though, is I normally flame the crap out of this on CK because CK is a carry that's good at the like early and mid game basically. Mostly the early mid to the mid. It's really strong. Probably one of the strongest carries here. Midas just delays that longer. Yeah. It does help you get more farm in the long term. Um, and Midas is better for CK than it much than it used to be because your illusions get that attack speed at least. Looks but like we have some divage happening here towards the top lane. Oh that creep could hard move in for immersion. A rotation from BZZ to try to slow them down. He tried to body block within the trees. Helps a bit. Now we have some Radiant members stuck behind. There's that ridiculous OP move called the Sandstorm. Can't see him. Nets there. They're Not locking again. him under. Here comes Nyx. 
And they're just oh. like, we're going to get you on the other side of the globe, too. Doesn't matter. That's double feeds for Illidan. That well, is. G is over there like, guys, I just gave us this huge advantage yeah. in the mid lane. What are you doing? They're, what they're doing is they're thinking we have this giant advantage <laughs> and we're winning by so much that we should be able to get these kills. But they're they're making overconfident, stupid mistakes. Like, they stayed there so long because they really – I don't know if they – Maybe the Sand King body blocked them by doing the Sand I'm not sure if that's possible or not. You have to double check, but that was real bad. That's safe to say. And yeah, what a huge mistake. I mean, the Midas is going to help CK stay relevant. That's one nice thing. Gives him levels faster. It's going to allow him to gain gold rap more rapidly outside of just team fighting, which is usually where he works exclusively. Um, but, but damn, dude. Oh, Lycan's even going to block the uh, the large camp here, or at least try to. And Lycan got to go through the jungle, and then he was working that whole time through the bottom lane. He's creeping back up slowly, too. Yep. So they could just sleep on him now that they have all these other issues to deal with. In the meantime, we witness G take down that mid-tier 1 tower. So That's good, at least. Some money for the for everyone. Espada now can, is a, it's a little uneasy in that mid lane, but it's room to work with now. At least Sand King could reside in the lane. He's got quite a journey ahead of him towards the Blink Dagger, but you know, you gotta start yeah. somewhere. Interesting goes Soul Ring. Uh, not super common right now, but it is their off lane. Um, so he's gonna spend a lot more time pushing, probably. Um, and Soul Ring certainly helps with that. Um, see what else. Uh, Axe is, did go for a hood first, so opted for hood over Vanguard. I think that was a, a great option. Like Vanguard obviously is more raw HP, but there's so much magic damage on the enemy team that puts the, the obvious grab here. Yeah. Only thing Vanguard's way better at is Lycan stuff. But yeah, Lycan stuff. Lycan will shut down, so maybe it won't matter as much. But he doesn't want to go with the either. overconfidence that his other team members have, have already been, you know, sipping on. Hey, he was part of fail, fail number two. There. It's true. It's true, though. So it's not. Uh, it's not solely his team messing up. Um, He's got some time to replicate it here. I hear. I hear C Kale. Oh, it's, it's over here. Though. Yeah, but she's got the song, and they're setting up. Is Misha got ult? Yes, he does. Drops both of them. Here's a four-man movement here. Oh, man. While Spirit are trying to make these little setup plays, Espada are so quick to respond as a team and just take full advantage of the situation at hand. But here oh, comes a time. move from Spirit running in. The first dunk of the game is going to off the goat head oh. of the Lesh. That's a three-kill streak. Now going to be handed over. Naga's like, not before I grab this illusion rune. Drops it. Slows them down. Huge. Great kinetic field from the high ground for Misha will slow them in their spot. That would have been a kill otherwise, because they, they would just have to chase the Naga until they get another battle hunger. But he keeps them away long enough. I mean, it's good rotation, at least from G. They, they end up getting one return kill, and it's on the left, so it's a big one. The yeah, and it's on Axe, so he gets close to that Blink Dagger that much faster, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, that was really solid rotation for them. Um, Viper's going to be going for a Dragonlance. He's, uh, he was a little bit unsure. Um, first queued up Dragonlance and went to Maelstrom. Now back to Dragonlance. Uh, I tried the Maelstrom build on Viper. It wasn't... Super sold. It's always a hard question. Like, uh, I don't. Do you ever? Do you ever play Viper? Not a whole lot. No, that hero is pretty. You know, it's Viper. You too bored. I'm not a big poisony kind of player. Green. I'm not big on green heroes. I like. I like playing heroes personally that are kind of like. They allow you to get into make stupid decisions and then try to outplay your opponent when things yeah. get Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Like Viper, Bristleback. Death Prophet, those kind of heroes. You know, yeah. I've always those. I've always really liked them. So My back's against like, the wall. Like it's time to go. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and they allow you just to like play kind of mindlessly, and uh, which is good for me because I'm not very good at like map awareness and stuff. So I like them. Yeah. But there's always this hard question at level 10 where you're like, I could attack way faster and try to become a pseudo DPS, or I can get the 8% spell life steal. And when I get in those shit situations, I'm gonna, g if I kill somebody, I'm yeah. getting 100 of health from them dying, kind of a thing. True. And maybe that'll make the difference. So it's uh, definitely a hard decision to make. But the attack speed one is you can actually be reasonably strong right clicking on this hero and considering there's not that many carries on the enemy team yeah. this might be a cool choice to make this game yeah maybe also formulating how much DPS output their own team has I mean it yeah. feels pretty heavy on the CK right now in terms of physical deeps and if Viper can kind of become a pseudo carry later on it certainly would help that a bit looks like they are possibly going to get ambushed here but there is a ward Scouting out, like, you know, these centaurs moving around. They like it in the camp nearby. But look at the smoke movement from behind. Do they want to snipe the courier? No, they're looking for bigger, a bigger prize. They're focusing the Viper right away, but also getting a pseudo takedown on the Witch Doctor. He'll go down first. They're chasing down G behind the tower. A rotation comes in, but a centaur was there waiting for Viper. They just easily stomp him down and blow him up. The Birdman comes crashing down to the planes below. And that is a quick three-man kill for Espada, plus a tower takedown. Yeah, they, they weren't ready for that fight at all. Um, they actually, it looked sloppy, but they caught both quite easily. They Might may get Phobos too. too. 
They send in the Disruptor first so that they can glimpse him back. Oh, thank goodness, because he missed the Burrow Strike. Charges up the Epicenter, and then they'll slowly dub him down. They made him work for it, at least. But that's basically every side of the map winning here. Uh, the only place that went okay, maybe is Illidan's running around, not dead, but... Not good. Um, G was running for his life there. I also kind of wish he would have turned and thrown some spells off at the Lash. Maybe he would have killed them when they dove that tower, but it was hard. He had a haste rune and stuff, so just a T-Spirit kind of throwing some of their advantage away. And now this Midas just looks bad on CK, honestly. Yeah. So uh, uses ultimate here. This is one of those times where you're like, hey, my hero can't do anything. And that's <laughs> partially because he has a Midas, but also because like he missed a big team fight opportunity. He feels like... Like, he actually just used his ultimate, and he killed the creep wave, and that's that's it. Now he's, he also got unlucky, sending it to the neutral camp. Do you think Armlet is probably just the more cookie-gutter so standard of pickup that he should have gone for? They're, they're comparable costs. They're, like, 300 gold difference, and Armlet gives you, like, five less attack speed and all the other armor or Armlet benefits. So it's, like, night and day uh, difference in terms of benefit. But he'll get more levels this way. Just his ultimate is far worse. Okay, they get a call on Sanking Bottom. They finally get a combo off here. Oh, yeah, they do. That one looks oh. successful. <laughs> Bit of a brick on the dunk, but kills done, and that's that's what's like important. He, he used it early because he wanted to amplify. He wanted to get the damage amp from the uh, the Skyra Silence before it ran out. That's all. That's it. Oh, wow, you're going to give him that? Okay. He wanted to amp that 150 damage. Sure. The drop, dude. All right, all right. <laughs> here comes Edict. Level 3 from Nyx onto this top lane. Ilden watches from afar, but knows that he can't stand up to the man of goats. He doesn't so. have his ulti. He used it to farm that one ranged creep. So Yeah, so now he doesn't have it until tomorrow. The cooldown is just so ridiculous yes. on that thing. Still a minute before he could take a fight with mm -hmm. it. And at this point, you know, Dyer already on to bigger, better things. They're farming through the jungle that CK would love to gobble up. And they're going to plant some wards down, some deep wardage too. It looks like they're going to plan out to hunt the CK at some point. He may be the sleeping yeah. giant on spirit that they don't want to have to deal with later. You know, on the bright side, though, is that uh, if CK is jungling, you're going to lose anyway. So maybe these wards technically won't make a difference. Um, they would be nice <laughs> now if they can grab him. That's the thing. He's kind of like Vengeful Spirit in a way where it's like if he's yeah. not in lane farming, he's probably farming in the jungle. <laughs> okay, here they go. Glimpse back. Double TPs, though. And because he already used the glimpse, <laughs> I mean, Destructor's just going to have to hand that one over. It looks like this time Spirit were ready with those TPs. And they beat the hell out of that little golem. Hmm. Well, it actually worked out nice. A couple cool things there. Chaos Knight was able to get out of the reality out of the kinetic field with Reality Rift, moved himself on the outside, and despite him maxing Chaos Bolt, which is normally not done because it scales terribly, it gives him so much stun duration that it makes his other supports better. So it makes kind of makes up for his lack of damage. Yeah, it is a five-man rotation for just a disruptor, so it would be nice for them to get something else out of it. They're trying to make the most of the situation. They pop a smoke as a team, and it looks like they may cross paths with Lycan. Of all the people, it is going to be the best target they could ask for. Lycan there. There's the dunk. The blood's on the floor, and they hit the showers to clean up afterwards. Very appropriate. That's a, such a good point. For them. Yeah, so things are basically looking good for for Team Spirit again, in my opinion, because like Lycan, Lycan is zero four and three right now. That's their that's their hard carry essentially, and other than that, it's a Leshrac. Yeah. Leshrac is top farm, but I do not have the confidence that he's going to be able to go out of control here. Um, it's just he's not as survival as here. I've I've been losing a lot of faith in Leshrac core the last couple days. He doesn't feel like Lena. He like in terms of his ability to set pressure and get kills. He just farms really fast, but it doesn't matter because good teams will just kill them anyways with chain stunning. So I don't know. I, I just the game looks very winnable uh, from Team Spirit here as long as they keep about the same path of mistakes. They've been playing a little sloppy. I don't think it's gonna matter at this point. I'm not sure though. It's funny. I kind of share your same thoughts on on Lesh too. I haven't really seen him be a scary goat man since. His TI five days really, but Popus might die to ancients. He still finds. Uh, well, <laughs> if he had a Vanguard, he would have been fine. This is like, yeah, that's basically like a Vanguard versus Hood situation. <laughs> it's like, oh, I can't tank these. He also max battle. Here, so. All right, there's that arm on CK. <coughs> so it looks like he did pick that up promptly after. Yeah, that's not bad. Pretty decent timing. Um, now he's basically ultra strong, and he's gonna also attack. His illusions will attack way faster than normal because he has the Midas. And in some ways, also like this because a lot of people buy something like a, a an echo saber at this point. And I think he's just he's probably going to skip uh, it. But he might die here. Spot is on the move to jump him in the middle lane. They're going to lead him with a burrow, kinetic field, static storm. Can they burst him down before he makes it out from the silence? Good zoning back from Secret on those back lines, and there's the moment they turn around and they just obliterate the lichen. 
now it's a frantic case here. There's that mushroom oh, you were talking catch. about, but oh, good catch right there. Turnaround stun, now a song, and they gotta evacuate. No more spells to work with. They do still have the epicenter, but at this point, they just seem a bit too tanky. Glimpse back one to, to stop chasing, but yeah, it works out. I mean, the, the benefit of CK at this point is he has stupid health. And he's got okay magic resistance. I mean, they had Spear Vessel and everything, but I, I they caught him. They chain stunned him. I don't know if Lesh was on top of him the whole time, but that's basically their only damage. If they don't have either Lesh or Lycan there, their other three supports just don't do enough. It's a Naga Siren with a Disruptor. That is not high damage. It's great utility, but it's not good damage. If they have an Epicenter on top of that, maybe. Yeah, but we're still talking about a 2,000 HP hero with armlet possibilities. Uh, maybe they just figure, like, okay, the CK is farming in the mid lane right now. Like, Sanking is like, I got to stun him. I don't have time to charge up a burrow or charge up a epicenter rather yep. and it's not like he even attempted to it wasn't canceled or anything so yeah i'm not too sure but they got to recognize that they don't have the firepower at the moment to pull off something like that the problem is is that i don't know if the spotter may have just missed their window entirely at this point is there going to yep. be an opportunity for lichen to even match the level and momentum that CK and Viper are both already at. It's really hard, because normally as Lycan, you, you do well or decent in your lane, then you catch up and get even farther ahead. And then you just use your ulti to get some support kills here and there and, and win some team fights. but he hasn't had that opportunity. He's basically been playing catch up the entire game, and he got super out lane, which we don't see very often, but their dual lane setup was just really smart. So put uh, Spirit in such a great place. All the throwing they did, it just wasn't enough to counteract this. And now the, uh, the important thing that everybody on Spirit is building, with the exception of Axe, is BKBs. That's the CK item that's going to follow this up. And after that, there's nothing they can do. Yeah, I really don't think there is. I mean, Spears lineup have one that could definitely come back into a game like this if given the opportunity. Espada, once they're trailing behind, it's just such a steep hill to build a pullback from. So, oh, Mish, unfortunately, is going to get spotted. Admirable support trying to move in deep to get some good intel with some wards, but now it could be punished on the way in and possibly his teammates on the way out here. They're on the chase, waiting for the blink, but the Spirit Vessel does cancel it out nicely, and they're not going to be able to pursue. Hmm. Oh, yeah, they're just going to keep defending everybody. Um, Viper does pick up a, a, the Maelstrom first, so his ability farm is now going to be fine for the rest of the game. Tons of AoE, tons of magic damage. He goes for the attack range. Yeah. This is uh, it's a fun build. This one. Split to the side lanes and push them out when necessary. And then you mentioned, yeah, he's going for the BKB because that's going to be definitely the golden item of this game, certainly for Spirit. Uh, Lestrite goes for a fast Aeon Disc, actually. Interesting. Um, normally, the, the classical build is usually something like a Bloodstone, but almost everybody goes Yules on these types of heroes first just because of the movement speed and the mana regen is usually better being able to dodge a, a Disable. And now having Aeon Disc as well means that if he gets caught by something like the CK initially, then at least he's going to have enough time to be able to defend himself. Whereas otherwise, the CK could probably jump and kill him instantly, even with the Yule. So he'll go Bloodstone now. So now then he'll have health, the ability to suicide, and the Aeon Disc, which is a, a good way to deal with this. I think this is like one way to try to make his hero more survivable. Maybe something more players should have been doing. Looks like we have a little bit of a lull for each team to farm it up in the meantime, though. As I say that, it looks like a potential call to make the jump onto BZZ here. As he pushes out this bottom lane, we see a rotation from Spirit. Skyrich, oh, he wants to go this time with the power of that epicenter. But this axe has a blade mail and a hood. So he's just shrugging off all of the magical damage being put forward. And they just zone out the Naga and finish her off. Another response from Spirit where they're just showing off how swole they are, essentially. Looking to run them down. Lycan, Wolf what Warm, a stun. moving in. Beautiful setup and stun means the Lycan can quickly go in and sweep up the Axe and the Skywrath Mage. But they still have a big test. The Viper's waiting behind. He's super tanky. Thank goodness the CK's not here. <laughs> As Spotted are going to run away with what they got. They must have glimpsed him back or something like that. Uh, Did he try to TP like. in? He, well, he his, must his, have. his illusions are there. I mean, and his TP's on cooldown. They definitely so. didn't walk. <laughs> Yeah. They, and they were wrecking the Lesh. Oh, Lesh. these illusions were there. Oh, okay. Yeah, Lesh's Aeon Disc was on. He's like, oh, I'm killing these illusions, no problem. And all of a sudden, Aeon Disc runs out and he goes down to like 25% health almost instantly from those those oh, illusions. They're man. dealing a lot of damage. BKB is now finished on the Chaos Knight. He still has the Midas. He, he actually went for the Strength perk. I think this is actually a mistake. I've seen a lot of CKs, maybe not a lot, but some go for the cooldown reduction these days. And it kind of makes sense. It's not a lot. It's 12%, but it's your ultimate. It's your Chaos Bolt. It's Reality Rift. It's his BKB. It's and his Midas. you would know like, this makes him a great ability draft hero, too. Which aspect? 
The cooldown? The cooldown. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's... it's. But 15 strength is also hard to pack, pass out, but I, I think <laughs> in this case, I mean, if you have a Midas, I think I would definitely go cooldown reduction because that's yeah. like an extra bit of GPM and more levels and all that good stuff, so... Yeah, for sure. Um, but that said, he's just tankier, period, and now he can basically buy whatever he wants. Blink Dagger, Heart, uh, one of those items. Probably Heart, I think. Spawnants already have damage issues. If they're, if they're ever in counter situation like this, mm -hmm. the best answer is get tanky and get maybe get BKBs. And once you do, you win the game. And yep. that's right on the verge of where Spirit is right now. Yep, yep, yep. Feeling uh, almost desperation here from Espada as they're going to make another attempt to move in and hopefully take reign of this game. It's only a 2k advantage at the moment for Spirit, but if the game keeps going as it is, that will only continue to climb. Let's see what kind of setup they can get. Oh, they saw the rift, but it's a low cooldown. And they're figuring they can make a go. It's on the tankiest guy, really, of them all. Follow up on the back lines with the Burrow Strike, but then they look to make focus elsewhere as they pop some of these new they fresh BKBs. They quickly go to obliterate the Lesh. She manages to get the Yules off, but as he falls, they'll finish him off. And the rest of Espada have to go. They get the axe down, but... I mean, they obviously couldn't do much more with the Spirit rotating in and showing off all those BKBs. And now they're going to go for uh, Roche, it looks like. Yeah. I mean, they started the fight, and they went even, more or less, but it's still an axe for their for one of their two cores that need to make something happen. And the, uh, the Sand King offlane pick is just... I, I wouldn't say that's what to blame, but, I mean, if that if they have a weak damage support duo and their offlane is also a Sand King, it feels like an issue. But if one of those other supports is, like, a Witch Doctor for amplification or a Skyrath Mage or something like that, Something that does damage heavily and amplifies his other allies, then this all works out. But it's just, are they still, no. Were they just focusing too much on the CK with a pick like that? Being like, oh, let's just get AoE team fight, something that could blast down illusions. Um, I don't remember what order they picked Sanking. Sanking was last pick. It was, okay. if, if I'm not mistaken. It, it looked more to me like they needed a stun setup to make Lesh better. It was like one of those like late, like, all right, we have our draft so far for what we think is the right draft order, but now we need to make sure that we can like gank. And relying on like Disruptor and Naga alone make er, makes everything really hard. But if you have a Blink Sanking, then it's easier. Blink Burrow Strike, follow up. But then they then they ran into this damage problem, yeah. which was mostly caused again by the cool lane setup that Spirit did. The the Skyrath Mage Viper, it's laned the crap out of the Lycan, meant the Lycan's playing from behind, and that's one of their damage sources. Yeah, yeah I don't know what uh, off lane damage source that off also provides a setup, jumping yeah. initiation setup. There's not There's many not of them out oh, there. Uh, Slardar. It's probably a better one. Slardar, yeah, is actually one of the few. Yep. He doesn't necessarily do a lot of damage himself, but they at least have amplified Yeah, damage. he can amplify the damage of, his, of someone like the Lycan, let's say. It's probably worth it, uh, to be honest, even though it's only physical. and But the, between, like, Lesh, Diabolic Edict, and Lycan right click, I think maybe that would have been a better And they have it would have more Roche potential, too, even if they That's wanted true. to be able to snipe it back. Because right now they have really none at it's all. It's really good against Viper, too. Lowering his armor by 10 to 20 is great, because he's normally a tanky hero. Drop mm -hmm. his armor by that much, and all of a sudden like, he feels like he has to buy an AC earlier, for example. So, But, you know, Sand King did win the lane stage by going invisible. <laughs> so I Yeah, I mean, that came with the crazy kills on bottom, then on top, and what really felt like it was all a spada, and they were going to be able to recover from just the mid lane, but... Yeah, it looks like at this point Spirit were able to kind of get the time necessary and some pickoffs, some generous pickoffs to be able to get the additional items and levels that they needed. Now we have a very scary double damage CK coming down your mid lane with company. This axe is building into a pipe, which is going to mitigate most of the damage output that is bought to have at this moment. Yeah. Um, if this they, is if very scary. If they initiate on him again, they should maybe be able to kill him, but it's not going to be a lot of damage. Nice Manta split of the glimpse. Well, not Manta split, but Phantasm split of the glimpse there by Illidan. And he'll just turn that into a push on in. DZZ tries to slow them down with the Spear Vessel. Phobos is actually going to have to step dodge. off a bit. Song. BKB, though. Illidan getting locked indoors. That's all they can do, though. That's the problem. Yeah, one tower is providing most of the damage <laughs> at this moment. They're playing this so but well. But look at bottom lane. Look at bottom lane. What? Look at bottom lane. Oh, no. This shouldn't be happening. Lycan is backdooring him. G is having to deal with it. He will be able to run away. He does have a TP to make it back in base. But look who's trying to cut off and stop their TP. He's out. They've gotten a hold of Illidan. He is trying to flex his way out from all the trouble. They finally bring him down and his Aegis here. 
and they wait for his return. There's the second life. They have the epicenter going. There's the burrow strike. They hit him with a net. Fiverr is trying to help out his raid boss as much as possible, fending away and pushing back this disruptor. Has a glimpse up now, but they will be able to okay. get the finish on the Illidan. This is not too bad for a spot. They're really making the most and stretching this opportunity as best they can. Not Going on to Biver. Now Phobo shows up. It's a bit late. Do you want to chain feed here, though? So here, have to be careful. They could chase and glimpse back in three seconds. She's got. Oh, working. God. They can get G. They're going to go for it. Pull back onto the Viper. Look at all this lockdown. Now they can ensnare. Do they want to do it? No, they're nervous about this axe. Axe has a blink up now. Could jump in. I mean, a lot of their heroes are very But low. he's walking into the Sandstorm area. <laughs> he can't quite go through that direction. All right. They got to back up now. Wow, what a chain of events. No kidding. It, it just looked like, ah, oh, easy, Team Spirit ends the game here. But, man, the Lycan in the perfect position gets the Tier 3. They're, they're going to be able to get Shrines from that. And they also defend the mid lane. Um, they did a really good job dealing with the CK illusions, though. It would be like CK would go on somebody, and instantly they uh, they song to waste his BKB. Song and snare to waste his BKB. And then after that's over, he goes on the next guy. Um, the one guy that's in trouble uh, runs away, and the Sanking Burrow strikes the illusions. And that allows separation, basically. You just need to make sure that after your reality rifts, that you disable those instantly, and then you have time to walk away. Like, they played that perfect yep. to buy time. The question is, is they ever going to get an opportunity like that again? After something like that, that's got to be in the back of the mind. A spirit moving forward, yeah. and yeah. something they're going to have to be privy to. Just don't let them get, um, actually finish the racks, and then I think it'll be fine. We'll have to worry a little bit about uh, lane pushes, I suppose. And ultimately, that all started because Axe got a little bit low as well um, on the on the front line, taking damage, so... It's like uh, just just slowly a spot of finding some opportunities to make the game a little bit closer. It's still very heavily in Spirit's advantage. I know it's only a 1k gold advantage, but I, I feel like tactically it's very hard for them to lose the game. They just need to not uh, have throwing moves like the previous uh, engagement. Oh my gosh, BZZ to show himself. Counter. And they immediately jump in. Oh, Lycan. He's popping everything. Is he fighting or is he running? Uh, I think it was running. He's running Thinking about fighting, his team decides that they're not going to fight. And now he is running as fast as possible. Definitely a good good choice to get out of there. Yeah. And to mid. And by mid. And all the way up in the cross. Okay, well. Uh, thanks for the gold, buddy. <laughs> Just riffs up some money. Yeah, it's no loss for him. Um, he's almost at his heart now, so. Yeah. 3.5k. Without armlet. Without armlet, just the Reaver. He's going to be sitting at like 5k. That's like so crazy. CK's definitely got to be one of the like biggest gains in the game. Not biggest strength gain, right? But it just seems like whenever he gets any strength items, it just That's it really shows on. It's Ill. pretty high. 3.2 strength gain is, is great on this hero because he has illusions. Yeah. Just usually has other limitations, being kited, stuff like that, and yeah, he's going to be very tanky. They do have they did get spirit vessel early on. It's going to be great. Scales better as he gets more HP. That's true. But. Still going to be hard to finish him off and kill him. All right. While this is happening, there is a push on the top lane from that Lycan. Inching on in towards that Tier 2. The Siege from the low ground. Oh, I love this perk. G with that Hurricane Pike Viper. Yep. Just like a mini sniper just poking away at the Tier 3 and does drop it. And he got Poison Attack effects buildings. This is actually, in my in the right circumstances, one of the best perks in the game. It's going to deal so much damage to these buildings. It makes them sieging. Just Here we go, though. The Siege here. race is on. Lycan's going to force his way through that top lane already. A TP back from the Witch Doctor. They're trying to find him to cancel it out or cancel out the rest of those TPs, if possible. Only the Witch Doctor made it back. He's trying to fend off the pressure. A fortification was forced out. Top, top one, rack still <laughs> one rack still standing in that mid lane, but he's going to town on that top rack. We come back to this mid lane. They're going to get the finish on the Sand King. Illidan eating a lot of damage with the assistance of that Spirit Vessel. Buyback's going to be forced out from the Sand King. This Lycan does finish the top racks Dude, entirely, and he's making his way towards the mid lane. Ilden's got to get back. Be close. Yeah, he's got him. He's got him. Moves in. Rift pull back. Tries to right-click him Ooh. down. Gets one crit. Oh gets two God. crit. Oh! That's low chance. 12% of 12%. And back mid in the lane. mid lane, G's yep. still alive. Lesh gets the self yules off, but they oh, do get okay. him down once he drops. So now this is actually really going to hurt them. It's going to force a Lycan buyback, most likely, because they can just keep going bottom, perhaps, if they feel a little greedy. But uh, G's got no mana, so I guess they will back off. It's looking scary. The, yeah. With that top racks going down, yeah. I'm feeling less and less confident Technically, every moment. Technically, Espada are winning if you're counting base damage, which isn't really yeah. what matters. Three racks to two. I guess he picked off the range barracks with his uh, summons when he got... TP'd on, I suppose is what happened. Yeah. 
Nice. I mean, if, if there's just no split push, no, ma no matter what, Spirit wins this game. But with the split push, it's starting to get a little hard. And they don't have very mobile cores, actually. Pull back here. Aeon Disc popped on the Lesh. Phobos has to dance within the Static Storm. Ilden, though, rushes in. He's looking for a Rift. Can he get a hold of anybody here? Oh, nice. Slide, push, jump. But Yules is there for Axe. That's a fast hero. I think this is an Illusion Rune, pretty sure. So pretty nice to have. Um... So the, the issue basically is that Viper is not a mobile core, and almost never will be. And CK is certainly not a mobile core. Uh, he doesn't want to buy BOTs. He probably can eventually. He's, you know, he's got a lot of farm. Um, but they need they need to start dealing with these split push lanes a lot more. Um, and yeah. that's the biggest issue in, in their game. And to be honest, uh, very few other cores do push well. It's basically, Skyrath Mage does not push amazing until at least 15. Wish Shark doesn't push amazing either. So it's uh, they got to deal with these lanes. And if Sand King's constantly pushing a lane, and then they know the push is coming, they'll send Lycan to the right place and threaten these Raxes. At least they still have the true 2 mid. That's definitely the best thing going for them. Is yeah. that uh, they can't be backdoored on a, on, a, on a triple Rax very easily. They could go for tier 4s, but that's less of an issue, arguably. So, But Viper picks up a Butterfly now, so he's actually pretty stupidly survivable at this point. It's one yeah. of the, the benefits of his, his opponent's not scaling very much. He just gets Magic Immunity, gets a Butterfly, has tons of evasion. And um, has to worry a little bit about like magic damage overwhelming, I guess. But if, he's, if he plays it safe with his BKB, he should be fine. Yeah, Spear is going to hold out probably for the next Roche, have the Ages, and hope for the best opportunity to be able to take a push again. Probably mending these side lanes in the meantime as best as possible. But obviously, a, spot, a, a spotter rather, are going to be stretching them as thin as they can. They're already pushing through back to the bottom lane. I mean, they have so much out like spam. Out spam and, and ways to yep. clear waves on the side of Espada that it's it's easy for them to kind of relieve the pressure of their base. Tier 2 top, though, will be dropped, it looks like. G and Ilden take care of that one. Oh, he does go BOTs. Like Liking, yes, though. Man. Look what he's doing. To bottom lane. He eyeballs. Mm -hmm. But already they're there to try to deal with it. Someone's Necro. He's going to take out the Shrine now. It'll make it even harder for his opponents to react. But with the BOTs on Chaos Knight, um, the whole uh, backdooring thing is going to become a lot harder now. Shrines for everybody. G takes one of theirs. We're gonna take one of ours. I assume he's gonna go the damage perk at 25 uh, on Viper. Kind of depends what you have, but he's got so much attack speed, sure, and he's about to make me owner. Surely you grab that perk. He's he's gonna become like a real carry. 120. Yeah, that's actually pretty crazy. Very good perk. Both of them are actually very good situationally, but I think I think you go damage this game with what he's carrying. Cause he's gonna be able to push lanes like crazy. Yeah. So. Once he transitions to a, uh, a Boots of Travel as well, by having both Butterfly and Mjolnir, his attack speed is so high that it doesn't even matter that he loses the treads. Like, he's going to be completely comfortable with the movement speed and the higher mobility. Sinking. Albert picked up on Naga. That's pretty nice. Uh, okay. More utility. That's pretty good. Way to possibly shut down the heavy right click coming out from either the Viper or the CK, mm -hmm. given he doesn't obviously have the Phantasm ready to go. Definitely but better against be. Viper, I would say, but still still useful evasion for his hero. Like having 25% when uh, five illusions jump, you can save your life. A convenient DD rune for G, so they can go right into Roche. Really no threat at all there. This is easy, especially with poison attack. Poison attack's great against Roche. So. Oh, he's gonna, he's changed up. He's gonna go Satanic now, I guess. I think that's a good choice. Mjolnir, going for Maelstrom and Mjolnir is actually really mediocre these days, in my opinion. Like, you have to make use out of the active, or it just doesn't do that much. So, um, Satanic instead basically means that he, they can't right click him down anyways. The only way they kill him is nukes. And if he has Satanic and gets like two attacks off, especially once he gets the 120 damage perk, he's going to full heal. Um, so, it'll make it a lot harder for them to, to pick him off, I think. So, G takes the Aegis. Is that kind of like CK's, like a transform hero? So, you imagine he's used his. Phantasm and everything already, just or much lower chance that he dies anyway. So like Viper's raw HP is just not that high. He's like survivable, but if he gets chain stunned, for example, and everything gets thrown on him in a bad situation, he definitely can die. So just mm -hmm. a little bit safer. But definitely the other aspect that you brought up, the, the whole illusion thing. Yeah, likely w when CK goes down, he's already used everything he had. But you're right. I mean, he has nearly 5k when he flexes the armlet. And look, they're already preemptively preparing for split push. Illidan's bottom in Viz smoked 
just in case the Lycan wants to inch forward, he did already. I mean, that's a clever play, but Lycan seems to step ahead. He's already back inside the base. So trying to figure out which CK illusion is real. And, and, and if any of them are. Oh, he actually set off the Aeon Disc with one of his illusions on that. That is left. crazy. They finally, the illusions are taking so much effort. And they're not even inside the base, and the racks are almost down. Yeah. Looks like Jeez. That's oh, the poison attack. Look at helping that. it. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Jeez, thirsty. He wants to get a song. Okay. Pretty Are they going to get the catch? No Ilden here. Uh, Ilden seeping in now. He got boots of travel. He just went to the creep wave. He's going to be coming in from the south any moment. Can Espada get something out of this? Because if they don't, Ilden, the big boss man, is going to come in and help close things out for this game entirely. Move in with the epicenter. Pretty decent damage, but they're barely able to get G down, and that's just his Aegis. Jump in from Ilden. But this may be the beginning of the end here. Spirit looking to Get clear out this. and make this home their own. Rift, cheese. DK Phobos is able to get the jump on the Lycan and finish him off there. Lycan buys back, goes towards the shrine, and he's like, this one's over unless I run to the bottom. So he's just heading that way, seeing if he can make it to the base somehow. The creeps are in at least, so he could backdoor when he gets there. But they're going to see him coming with the ward. They just got to clear out the base here. See if they get distracted. The rest of Espada are probably going to hold them in as best they can, but it looks like Ilden's already made it back inside the base. So they're prepared for the approach of the Wolfman already. They're buying time at least. They're doing a decent job on the spot. Yes, they are. Three man burrow. Lycan's going to the bottom. He's in there now. He managed to grab a Seder creep and they begin to go to work. Ilden's trying to head that direction. Oh, but the fortification's slowing him down. I'm trying to keep action on both here. As they glimpse back in, GG tries to poke him. We go back to bottom. Ilden's duking it out. But it is going to be a Rax takedown by the Lycan. And he runs away. That's two sets for two sets now on each side. Meanwhile, our mid lane fight still goes on. Oh, it's got eggs on disruption. Can they finally bring down the Aegis? Yes. And the rest of Espada have to hustle their way back inside the fountain to heal on up. Finally, Team Spirit will take their leave. I mean, they're equal on racks still. Like <laughs> they're still getting a little out of that. It was a good choice for the Lycan across the whole map. Um, I actually think Illidan maybe made a mistake there. He TP'd. I, what he needed to do was push up top, I think, and then TP to the racks, perhaps, to give it backdoor protection. Might have helped. It's hard to say. But by going back, he, there's no way he's going to kill a Lycan in all of his summits. Like it, he's a CK, right? Um, I think it would have been just better if he he killed the creep wave and then went back, perhaps. But regardless, I still think they're in a great position. Of course. Um, they're still getting item after item. Um, I don't know if uh, uh, Viper has spent his money since uh, since the Satanic purchase, but he's got about a thousand in the bank. Um, CK's just finished his AC, so he's attacking even faster. Only thing he's really lacking is mana. So, um, or maybe something like a Battle Fury could be nice just to deal with the the CK perhaps. But got to keep the lanes pushed out. Got to take the last racks and man, Espada's actually making him work for it and making the yeah. game a little dangerous. Yep. Credit to them as they pressure out this mid and bottom lane. Team Spirit know that they're kind of eyeing on the home stretch. If they can get everything they asked for towards this top lane, this could be the game closure. But here's a here's a move from Espada. A smoke back play. They first scan their woods to see if anyone's going to be at the top of the hill. If they get the back line, this would be pretty good. Move in. Naga. Oh, Song. But they didn't get DK. They didn't oh, get Phobos. He could move in and blink. The jump in. There's the epicenter. And now they're going to be rushing forward. Lycan waiting on who to focus. Decides on Ilden and quickly changes his mind. Ilden's illusions run right inside the base. Looking to go for the Sand King. They quickly clear out the illusions, though. And that's it. It's just going to be Ilden doing it on his own. But they're inside the base. And they have everyone from his spot also at attendance here. So they don't have to worry about that split pressure whatsoever. Snare. Stun. But he is just... Shrugging off a lot of the damage, turns around, looks to go for the Lesh, blows him up, buyback's got to get forced out, two of them already from Espada, and uh, I don't think it's going to get any better here. Lycan dropped, he has no buyback at all. Sand King has to use his, these are the final lives of Espada, but their racks begin to crumble, while half of Spirit are going to go ahead and just corral Espada inside their own base. When they're buying a lot of time here, especially with that Halberd, it's constantly on the Viper, but just way too much damage now for them to deal yep. with and GG's called there. I so. mean, big credit to Espada given the situation yeah. at hand. They really did make Spirit sweat for that one. Yes, and, and Spirit 
certainly took this like massive leaning advantage and threw it away with a couple really sloppy, maybe not really sloppy. The first one was like slightly sloppy. The second one was really sloppy, but uh, made the game harder. I mean, if they had a different hero than CK, maybe this game ends up differently. But it was considering the the lack of damage on the enemy team, I think it was it worked out really nice. But maybe that was just them not reacting perfectly or something. But Felt felt very one in the uh, the lane setup. The the sky viper dual lane mid shut down the lycan, deal with Lesh as needed late game um, by having uh, a chaos knight pick maybe is uh, the reason that was so simple. Yeah, um, and it worked out. And based on what I saw, and it's only just one game of this series, but you know, team spirit put themselves into a better position with their draft, but their execution was a bit you know hot and cold. Well, Espada may have put themselves into a bit of a corner with the draft and how things panned out, but they certainly played that as best they could with the draft at hand. So it yeah. does make me very curious to see how game two could go if Espada have a draft with more outs to work with, if the, the, the laning phase does crumble apart, let's say. And for Spirit, if they don't happen to draft themselves something good, I'd be a little nervous to see how they could play out, you know, being behind in the drafting stage, let's say. Yeah, I fully agree with that assessment. Yeah, yeah. if Espada had a different lineup, if they like they were committing three heroes to one guy and they couldn't kill him. And that's yeah. just like, well, there's a that's the problem. Like, you're executing it as good as you can. You rush the Spirit Vessel because you're like, guys, we need as much damage as we can get. Like, the only difference maybe is they get, like, a medallion or something, but they don't even right click anyways. It's like, yeah. It's I think they, like, hard. played it as best they could. They itemized pretty well. I'm surprised at how well they they held out, considering the situation. So I'm very eager to see how things go for Game 2. That's right. It is playoff action here, so we're in best of threes. Team Spirit versus Espada. Game 2 going to be coming up after a short break. We'll see you then.